right. good, evening. good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. We'll call the meeting to order. First order of business, and I don't know if we have anybody here from the ministry. There he is. There you go. Oh. <laughs> we'll do our invocation and please remain standing for a Pledge of Allegiance. I didn't get it. I didn't get an email. <laughs> oh, I thought Paul Elgin sent it to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> he asked me to come in tonight. He was out of town. No, we appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, well. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this evening and Lord for the council that is here gathered, as well as other members of, of the city representing whether it's from our first responders or management. Lord, we pray uh, that you would grant your wisdom to everyone that's gathered here together for, for the betterment of this city and for the citizens and for the business that is uh, gonna be discussed here tonight. Lord, whether there's presentations or agendas or public comments even. Lord, that uh, again, grant us a spirit to work together for the betterment of this city. And uh, thank you again for these men and these women uh, Lord, as they, they work for all of these things, and uh, whether they're elected or whether they're just uh, brought into these positions, Lord, again, grant uh, favor for our city through all of these things. And we pray this in the name of uh, Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. 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 Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. All right, Gloria, let the roll call show that all council members are present. So noted. Next is the minutes, approval of the minutes. Okay, uh, considering the minutes, we need to approve the City Council regular meeting minutes from August 2nd um, and approve these council meeting special meeting minutes from August 2nd. Uh, we need to consider approving the City Council special meeting minutes of August 9th and accepting for the record the Arts and Humanities Commission minutes as they're all presented. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second to approve the min minutes as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Next item is item D, claims. Mayor McFarland, I move to accept and pay the claims dated July 28th, August 10th, 2021 as presented. Second. second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any disapproved? I nope. abstain, Mayor. Okay. Note, Lisa, abstention. Claims are approved. Next is our meeting agenda approval. Is there any changes to tonight's agenda? Anybody from council? Mayor McFarland, I move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, tonight's meeting agenda is approved. We have no special presentations, so the next item is G, our consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine matters and will be enacted by one motion and one roll call vote of the council. There'll be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or member of the public so requests. In which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence of the agenda. Is there anyone who has anything you want to pull from the consent agenda? Anybody from the public? Anybody from staff? Okay. Mayor McFarland, I move approval of uh, G1 and G2 as presented. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Gloria, can I please get a roll call vote? Council Member Lavender. Yes. Council Member McBride. Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons. Yes. Councilmember Herman. Yes. Councilmember Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. All right. Next part of the agenda is our public comments, which is item H on our agenda. I do have some comment cards here. 
So let me just uh, lay uh, some groundwork. You will have three minutes to uh, address the council, so please watch your time. There is a little clock that's up there. And when you come up, please uh, state your name and your address for our records. And then we won't start the timer until you begin. Also, as a reminder, this due to open meeting laws, we have to have uh, agendas posted to have a conversation about the subject. So we're limited on what we can discuss. In fact, we, we can't discuss it. We'll, we will pass it off to staff and ask them to follow up. But we will follow up if there is some follow-up that's needed. So the first name I have here is Fernando. Hello, my name is Fernando Partida, P-A-R-T-I-D-A. I live at 1554 East Kingman Place, Casa Grande, Arizona, 85122. And the reason I'm here, I am really concerned about the Esporta Gym. Uh, they're going to be closing that down in about 30 days, and it's really going to hurt the community. So I don't know if you could do anything about it, but it is a concern for a lot of people. We have a solid majority out there that's concerned, so I'm just speaking on their behalf. So it's, it's a big deal. It's, like, it's a huge deal. So hopefully you guys could do something about it, maybe negotiate with somebody, or I don't know. I'm just bringing my voice. I want to be heard. Well, so that's pretty much it for me. Okay. Well, well, thank you, Fernando, and we will get back to you because we may have some information that we could potentially share with you. That would be great. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Thank you. All right. The next name I have is uh, Anthony Amato. It says one person. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> They're already nervous about it. <laughs> um, I'm Anthony Amato. I live at 1345 East 12th Street. I'm Delaney Dickey, and I live in 1680 East Angelica Drive. Oh, okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. I am Anthony Amato, Secretary of the Casa Grande Youth Commission. And I'm Delaney Dickey, President of the Casa Grande Youth Commission. We are here this evening to speak on behalf of the Commission. We just wanted to keep you all in the, updated in the goings of the Commission and outline a few things that we are interested in working with the Mayor and the Council on this term. So for our focal event of the term, we plan to host in our city a summit of Arizona youth governments. We will be inviting youth governments like ours, found statewide, uh, to a conference designed solely for youth by youth, setting itself apart from other conferences that cater to what adults think youth leaders want in a convention. We plan to formally invite the nearly 40 youth governments from across the state at the beginning of September and are enthusiastic to do so in person to those we meet at the youth day of the upcoming annual conference of the Arizona League of Cities and Towns. Uh, we hope to include some great pillars of our community uh, in, to lead some seminars and workshops, including some council members, hopefully. This is an exciting first annual event for us that we hope to grow and make great with the help of the mayor and council. Um, when mayor, Mr. Mayor spoke at our annual retreat Saturday before last, he brought up the idea of adding youth delegate seats onto boards and commissions whose bylaws are being redrafted. We at the Youth Commission are enthusiastic about this idea and think adding youth representatives to our city's boards and commissions, especially those dealing with um, issues that concern youth, such as the Arts and Humanities Commission and the, or a Community Services Advisory Board. We would love to work with the city to make that possible. Our vision for this 2021 to 2022 term, as we come out a year that forced the commission into something as a dormancy, is to increase our involvement in the city government and thereby distinguish ourselves from service organizations and clubs because we are not a club, we are a commission. This vision ties into everything we do this term, including the two topics that Anthony spoke to you about previously, and the cooperation of mayor and council is essential to seeing this vision through. As always, we have two great advisors and Matt, <laughs> <laughs> and this year we have a great <laughs> officer team who is eager to get to work. We know this is going to be a great term and we look forward to working through with the mayor and council on making that possible. Thank you. Great, thank you guys. Keep up the good work. Did a good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the floor is still open, so is there anyone else here that may not have turned in a uh, request to speak and would like to address the council? This is your opportunity. All right. Seeing none, then I'll close the floor and move on to our first 
Item of business, which is uh, item I, award of contracts. Chief? Mr. Mayor and Council, good evening. Good evening. I'm here to talk to you tonight about ordinance for a purchase of Scott SCBAs. As a reminder, SCBAs are our self-contained breathing apparatus. This is a item that was budgeted in our 2022 General Fund Operations Division budget. And you guys remember um, a few months ago when I brought in the bottle, we had an emergency purchase for bottles. That was because our breathing apparatus are essentially at end of life. Um, we were basically kind of putting a Band-Aid on the problem until this year because we wanted to try to, we we're kind of gauging how things were going to go with COVID uh, money-wise and stuff. So we did the bottle purchase, and now we've come back to you to talk to you about the full SCBA purchases. These SCBAs that we're currently using, the Scott SCBAs that we're currently using, were purchased in 2007 and 2008 under a FIRE Act grant. Uh, it was a grant purchase, so the city had a small match, but the federal government basically paid for all of them. We're at a point now where those breathing apparatus are at their end of life. Um, we can't even send them in to have them repaired and stuff anymore. They're basically done and over with. Um, as with things in the fire service, as time goes by, there's significant improvements. The new SCBAs are going to be significantly better for us, enhance firefighter safety, and uh, provide a lot of uh, add-ins that we didn't have previously. <clears throat> we are requesting to purchase 48 SCBA units. We did scale that back. Um, previously, we were carrying SCBAs on every single apparatus in every single seat, including reserve apparatus. I didn't really feel like that was necessary because a lot of them sat for, sometimes they would sit for months or long periods of time without being exercised. And SCBAs are something that need to be checked and exercised a lot. So we are basically putting them in all the seats where somebody sits and our apparatus that we use most frequently um, as reserves. Uh, purchase of 48 breathing apparatus. We're also purchasing 70 face pieces. The face pieces are individualized. We have to uh, give those to each individual person because when you're wearing them, saliva and body fluids, all your stuff goes inside of them. So those are issued individually to each person. Um, the new ones that we're getting, these new face pieces cost a little bit more, but they're going to have a, a, a radio interface feature on them that allows, I don't know if you, you probably never heard it, but when we try to talk with a breathing apparatus on, sometimes it's very difficult to understand. The new ones have a, the ability to transmit on our radio, so you'll, the speech and stuff that comes out of them will be a lot clearer, so that does enhance firefighter safety. Um, the bottles, we are buying some bottles, um, our 60-minute bottles, which are the ones we use uh, for confined spaces and also for our hazardous material, material units, are a larger bottle. We are replacing 20 of those. And we are also replacing um, our RIT fast attack packs. So that's the, we have a, it's called a, a RIT or a rescue team pack that we carry on the battalion chief's vehicle and some of the other vehicles that's used for, if you're going in to rescue somebody, if somebody calls and says they're out of air, you grab this wrist, uh, the RIT fast attack pack and take that with you so when you find the person, you can put them back on air right away. Um, it's not meant to be long-term, it's to get it on them and get them out of the building. So we are replacing uh, both of those as well. It is a sole source purchase. Um, we are purchasing this from MES in Tempe. Um, they are the only people that sell Scott Air Packs in Arizona. They are the only distributor for that, so that is the reason for the sole source. These are superior breathing apparatus. Recently, Phoenix went to another breathing apparatus, um, and they thought it was going to be a way to save some money, and I think it's been about eight months since they switched over, and now they're switching back to Scott. So um, that's very, very expensive to do. That, that involves changing all the brackets on your fire engines, uh, replacing all your tools, replacing all your bottles and all that. So that is one of the other reasons that we're continuing on with the Scott Air Packs. 
The purchase amount is to not exceed $677,310. That includes shipping and taxes. Um, with that, I don't have anything else for you unless you guys have some questions for me. Nope. I think you explained it well. It's a lot of money. This is a this is basically an integral tool for us. It's it's yeah. it's what yeah. allows us to go into the house yeah. and look for people and pets and all the other stuff and search the whole house. So it's something we have to have. Thank you. Yep. Thank thank you, Chief. No other, no other comments. Then um, I'll entertain an ordinance number, please, Gloria. Ordinance number three two eight nine, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona accepting the sole source provider offer from Municipal Emergency Services, Inc. for self-contained breathing apparatus and related equipment, authorizing expenditure of public funds and authorizing the execution of a contract. Mayor McFarland, I would move for approval of ordinance number 3289 as presented. Second. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second, Gloria. Can I please get a roll call? Council Member Lavender. Yes. Council Member McBride. Yes. Councilmember Fitzgibbons. Yes. Councilmember Herman. Yes. Councilmember Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. All right. Item I two on the agenda. <coughs> Terry. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, the subject for this request is Park Restroom Custodial Services. Uh, staff recommends the Mayor and Council. Authorize a contract with Detail Experts Franchise System LLC for a base bid amount of $46,200 plus a 2,000 contingency for an NTP of $48,200. Uh, this contract would provide park restroom custodial services for restrooms within our public parks. A uh, formal solicitation for bids was issued. Um, uh, there are eight parks at five, or eight restrooms at five locations. Uh, and this contract would provide cleaning seven days a week, including all holidays. Uh, the contractor will provide all equipment and consumable uh, items required to clean and stock each facility. In response to the solicitation, five formal bids were received for the project. After a, a review of the proposals, it was determined that Detail Experts was the highest ranked proposer, uh, and therefore that's why staff is recommending them to perform the work. And Terry, this is in Questions. all of our parks? Uh, it is in five locations. Okay, so five permanent restrooms? Yes, okay. well, eight, eight permanent restrooms at five, five different okay. parks. Okay. Thank you. Anybody, any questions? I just had one, and I know that the parent company is out of Tennessee, but they, they service cities like Mason and Scott, so are there gonna be, local management that are in the valley that oversee this? How's that work? Uh, to my understanding, yes. They will have uh, crews from the valley uh, overseeing their, their crews down here. Okay. Okay. Any other comments, questions? All right. Yes, Mr. Powell. Just, just a <coughs> follow-up question. The custodial services uh, involving restrooms, uh, is that is that a, that's probably a problem that comes up quite often, isn't it, on some of the areas where they are? Yes, it it, it can be uh, extremely problematic. Yes, yeah. I Any just I questions? just was wondering. I so. Okay. No more questions then. I will. Consider resolution number, please, Gloria. Resolution number 5330, a resolution of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, 
accepting a proposal from Detail Experts Franchise Systems, LLC, for park restroom custodial services, authorizing the expenditure of public funds, and authorizing the execution of a contract. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve Resolution 5330 as presented. Second. All right, I have a motion, motion and a second. Gloria, can I please get a roll call vote? Council Member Lavender. Yes. Council Member McBride. Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons. Yes. Council Member Herman. Yes. Council Member Powell. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you, Jerry. Um, I did forget to move the reports. Can I can I do that as my mayor's whim? <laughs> All right. I'm going to move our reports up in front of the executive session, so we'll move to item N on the reports, and I'll start with you, Mr. Lavender. I just have one thing I want to thank uh, Mr. Raines. Dwayne just walked out, but just last week, uh, members of the city met with the administration of Cactus and Choi to talk about the intersection out there on Courtson. There have been a number of what we would call near misses, and this Spirit of Partnerships working together to create some solutions out there uh, to ensure the safety of all of our students and staff that work out there. So thank you, Larry, if you would pass it along to Kevin and his staff and continue to work on that solution. Lisa? I just wanted to, I, I, I'm sure you guys have seen with Larry's emails that we're going to be doing an organizational cultural assessment. And I was just happy to see that. I think it's good for us to just kind of reach out to our employees and, and just see how everyone's doing. And, you know, of course, you talk about, you know, aligned values and actions, you know, um, and, you know, how to build collaboration and communication and trust. So I was just excited to see that. I mean, I know it's something that's not easy to do because you don't know what kind of feedback you're going to get. But, you know, I just think it's really important for us to just to get better as a city and, and grow and everything. So I really appreciate you doing that, Larry, and, and the, the whole staff doing that. Um, the, you probably have heard that the resource center, um, the roof, it's closed because the roof with the leak um, is damaged. And so um, mm. I know Steve Hardesty has been working with CARA. We have a meeting, um, Councilmember uh, McBride and the mayor and I have a meeting with CARA tomorrow to see what we're going to do moving forward, if we need to relocate. You know, they're still taking phone calls from people. They're still providing a lot of services to uh, people that, that, are, that are calling in on the telephone, and, and it's definitely a, a huge demand right now for the, for the need uh, in the community for homeless and those people needing um, any type of utility assistance, rental assistance, and all that. So those services are still um, being, you know, um, active and taken. So, and then of course um, we, the um, Councilmember McBride, and I were at the legislative update. Um, so yeah, a lot, lot going on. But I think in the end, you know, of course, as you see what's happening with, in the legislature. But I think what I got out of it is how much that the League of Cities really advocates for us cities, and they're really doing a best in some of the bills that they fought hard to protect us cities. So I was just really happy to see. But you'll you'll be reading that, and I think at the. League of Arizona Cities and Towns, they're going to have a session for everyone to participate in and, and get an update. So that's it with me. Thank you. Mr. Powell? I got to go to a powwow. <laughs> the powwow that I went to is, is uh, in the West Valley. <clears throat> it's, a, it's really a fancy place. It's typical to Biltmore or some of the others. And... Uh, we had a meeting with the uh, Natural uh, Resource uh, Conservation Districts in Arizona, and one of the things that I was happy that came out of it was the fact that the, um, the, the Senate and the House passed the, uh, the resolution to do a feasibility study. But this is not just an Arizona project. This is a, a Colorado River Basin project. So they, they followed through and said, let's make sure that every state governor uh, is aware of what we're talking about doing. And uh, if, if we get the support of that, would be uh, 14 senators, which would be pretty powerful. But uh, so anyway, it, uh, it was beefed up that way. and, and uh, uh, going to pass it also up to the uh, to the the uh, legislature that they need to do the same thing to include the others because it uh, it's a good thing and and uh, I, I as I say I enjoyed the powwow 
and and uh, got lost pretty much up there, <laughs> but I did escape okay, so. Okay, thank you, Mr. Powell. Bob? Yes, uh, I'm gonna <clears throat> reference Mr. Rain's uh, weekly update and uh, compliment you and and your staff and anyone else within city staff that assisted in the bond uh, funding for the public safety retirement liability. Um, the, uh, the advantageous interest rate that, that you got is outstanding. Um, it, it's certainly my belief that our most important job as mayor and council is to be good stewards of the community's funds and, uh, and, and this particular action, I, I think I'm adding the numbers right, uh, represents right. about $38 million over the next 15 years. Um, good job, our, our community mm -hmm. deserves that and, uh, and they, they, they got it. So uh, excellent job, thank you. That's all I had. Okay, Matt? I can't say what Bob said, but <laughs> <laughs> it's illegal. Um, no, but they started the underpass project this week, so that's exciting. They're up there cleaning and getting the weeds off the walls and getting ready for the big art project down there, so that's exciting. Um, I have heard a couple concerns about a turn signal at McCartney by the high school, but I know school's just starting, so I don't know if you guys have heard anything in the transportation department yet about that. Um, and I did want to see if I could get Delaney and Anthony real quick because I forgot to get a picture at the podium. So <laughs> if I can use my whim, Mayor, to go ahead. <laughs> All right. Hurry. Come on. <laughs> I like your talking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they get a new three minutes, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. That's it. Donna? Okay. Um, just a couple things. Uh, the mayor and I had a little bit of fun last week uh, doing some uh, videotaping for the mayor's reading program. Um, I got to play the, the puppet dummy, and uh, he got to play, got to play the dummy. Play the dummy. Um, and so that's out. <laughs> just a reminder that we do need video readers video for the reading program, so make sure to look out for that. Uh, I attended Saturday morning. The fire department had a great event out of the park, and the weather did not deter the kids from coming out. And I, it was just really great to see a lot of the firefighters um, with the kids and having a good time. And, and it was just an event where it was just very family oriented. So kudos to the chief on that. And then um, we also, the police department had a junior police officer um, this, this past week. It was really good to see that. And I think that as we move forward, we know that we still have some hurdles with COVID, but um, it's really nice to see people feeling like they can get out and enjoy themselves and take advantage of, of the things that, that's going on around the city. So that's it, thank you. Okay, thank you, Donna. Thank you, everybody. Um, just, just not to, you know, I always kind of beat the COVID drum, but just to remind everybody that it is still there. It's, what we're seeing now is that it's hitting our young people, so um, hitting them the hardest, but they're getting it from adults, so um, that, that and they're spreading it amongst themselves, but we still need, we still have a pretty large percent of our population that is not vaccinated, and I would encourage you to do so. Um, in the state, we're still, this peak that we're in right now is about 3,500 a day. Um, in the county, it's about 300 a day. It's certainly not where we were in January, so that's a good thing. January, it was like 12,000 a day in the state and, and uh, almost 900 a day in, in the county. So it's, uh, it certainly has not peaked like it did before. Well, of course, we may not be over yet, but I'm hoping that it calms down a little bit. Uh, there is a new Delta variant that's out there that's supposed to be even more uh, resilient and, and much more easily transmitted. So I would encourage people to continue, if you're in public and you're not vaccinated, for sure, wear a mask. If you are uh, vaccinated, be cautious, uh, use good discretion. Um, if it's a big group and a busy place, I would mask up. I just flew this weekend and, and everybody on the plane had masks. Of course, that's a federal requirement, but um, it was, it was uh, 
interesting traveling. And then um, I did also want to make comment that uh, the governor had a press conference today, Governor Ducey, and he decided that he was going to lay a few more rules on cities and towns. Um, and basically, he you know, and I'm, the reason I bring this up is because I get all questions all the time, and I get emails asking, well, "What about masks? What about masks? What about masks?" Well, what I just repeated before is the city's mask policy, if you will, um, because we our hands are kind of tied. Not they're kind of tied; they are tied. Uh, for example, this is his new rules: cities and towns and political subdivisions do not have powers to implement vac vaccine mandates even under declarations of emergency. Mask mandates or vaccine mandates. So we don't have the power to issue. We can require it within our city buildings if that's what we want to do. But that's where, that's the extent of our, our ability to do that. And we, we, yeah, anyway, any county, city, or political subdivision official that implements a vaccine mandate, that's us, Contrary to the authorities outlined in this order, and it's a violation of a Arizona revised statute, and such actions are punishable by a class three misdemeanor and subject to legal action by individuals or for violation of their rights under Arizona law. So you can be criminally charged. Any county, city, town, or political subdivision official who fails to provide earned sick leave to employees if it's, rec if it's recommended that the employees stay home due to COVID exposure is a violation of the Fair Wages Health Families Act and also subject to uh, review of the by the Industrial Commission. So that was just came out today from our great governor. So as you can tell, I'm not real happy with it. But anyway. You don't sound enthusiastic. No. Um, that's pretty much it. I, I did want to make a comment. We, we have had some pretty good numbers in terms of our, our housing. Um, we're up 95% over last year. A uh, total of 1,084 year to date in 2021. So continuing on a good trend. And I expect that that should continue. I think our, my original estimates were about 2,000 this year. So that's a, that's a great step in the right direction. So, a little disappointed in the census numbers. Um, the initial reports are coming in lower than certainly we expected. Um, one thing to remember is that the interim years are estimates by the census, and they estimate it based on new housing starts. It's not a count, and so therefore it's not official. So we were at, what, 48,000 on the last official count, and now this one they're saying we're at 53. Well, we were at 58 on the unofficial one last year, so we're st still trying to figure out you know, where that shortfall and where that short count came in. I believe it has to do with COVID and the COVID um, pandemic, because it was supposed to be from April 1st through the end of August, the, the actual surveyors did not get out into the market until probably July. So they were shorted like three or four months of counting and, and you know, knocking on doors to try and get counts. So I think, you know, and Eloy and Coolidge and Casa Grande really were impacted by, by that decision um, and that lack of knocking on doors. Uh, we, we have an older population, less people use a computer, and this year was, most of it was done by counting via computer. So that being said, we're gonna look at our options to see what we can do, if there is anything we can do, so. That's where we're at. Anybody else have any other comments or questions? I'll entertain a motion to move into executive session then. So moved. I have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we'll move into executive session. We'll give everybody a two or three minutes to clear out and thank everybody for coming tonight. Appreciate it. And you got done early.